Hi, everyone, and welcome to Team H technical presentation. This presentation was put together by Brandon, John, Mark, Patrick, and Rachel. Our presentation is going to cover estimating shear rate applied by mixing tank on non-Antonian fluids. This first slide was created from a poll given out to our classmates earlier in the week. The poll asked the class their first thoughts when they hear Newtonian fluids or assumptions that apply. All these words listed unfortunately no longer apply when dealing with non-Antonian fluids. This technical presentation will aim to help to fill the gaps from fluid class to industry. Some of the goals and key takeaway from this presentation include being able to describe the key differences between a Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluid, identifying the two main subcategories of non-Newtonian fluids, developing an understanding for how to calculate the power required by the pump to transport material, and also being able to write equations describing shear rate and shear stress of non-Newtonian fluids. There are observable key differences between Newtonian and non-Newtonian fluids. A significant distinction is their two separate behaviors. Newtonian fluids have a rate of flow that's proportional to the applied stress. They also have a viscosity independent from shear rate and viscosity that remains constant. Non-Newtonian fluids have a viscosity that changes with the force applied and can be broken into multiple categories such as shear thinning and shear thickening fluids. They have more complicated mixing, but the similarity between the two of them is that they both are used throughout different industries. When it comes to Newtonian fluid examples, the most relevant ones that usually come to mind are water, honey, and motor oil. When mixing each of these, the viscosity usually remains constant. However, when it comes to non-Newtonian fluid examples, the most relevant ones that come to mind are lotions, paints, and ketchup. And these are all really relevant in the consumer goods industry. These are each more complicated when it comes to mixing. And as I said before, they can fall under the category of either shear thinning or shear thickening. Thanks to fluid class, people should have a decent idea of Newtonian fluids and the properties that go along with them. It is also important to understand that non-Newtonian fluids, since there's a high chance of coming across them in the industry, we need to be able to talk about them. My team members have given some examples of non-Antonian products that one might encounter. Determining this type of fluid that the specific material is simply boils down to whether or not the viscosity of the fluid changes under applied shear force. Newtonian fluids display a shear stress that is linear dependent on the viscosity gradient. Non-Newtonian fluids display shear stress as a function of the fluid's power law indexes. This means that the viscosity is no longer constant and fluids become shear sensitive. Here in this equation, K represents the constant consistency index and N is the ideal flow behavior index. It's important to factor the apparent viscosity factor nu. It shows the shear rate dependence of viscosity can be categorized with non-Newtonian fluids into two distinct types, power law fluids and Bingham plastics. There are two types of power law fluids. The first is pseudoplastic, which is that new decreases as the shear rate increases or shear thinning and dilatants where new increases as shear rate increases. So it's shear thickening. With common dilatants, you can see that there's oobleck, a, sus a suspension of cornstarch and water, which has an increase in viscosity when force is applied. And another common pseudoplastic is quicksand, which is popular in movies. This behavior can be observed by how the sand's viscosity lowers as you move and struggle inside of it. And Bingham plastics, also known as Herschel Bulkley fluids, are with a new viscosity dependent on critical stress, and then it becomes constant. Mayonnaise is a common example of a Bingham plastic, a viscoplastic material that behaves as a rigid body at low stresses, but forms as a viscous fluid at high stress. You can whip mayonnaise to the point where it flows like water, but if you leave it alone, it'll stay still. When comparing the difference between fluids, it's easiest to use a graphical representation of the shear stress for a shear rate of each fluid type, which can also be referred to as a rheology profile. As we can see, this relationship is linear for Newtonian fluids with the N value equal to one. However, as we get into different fluid types, such as a pseudoplastic fluid, these each display, each display different behaviors based on their corresponding N value. It's also important to note that the power law indices K and N can be calculated from collected data sets. So now the question really is, how do we able to calculate a shear rate applied by a tank? 
Well, from numerous studies conducted by researchers, the shear applied by an agitator appears to be as a function of the blade slash propeller's geometry, uh, its diameter, along with its rotational speed. So as such, there exists a direct proportionality between the average shear rate and the rotational speed with a proportional constant referred to as a KS value. So with having the freedom of controlling your propeller speed, the challenge really lies on how are we able to determine the KS value itself? Well, luckily there appears to be a flurry of interest. There really exists a correlation with the KS value and a non-dimensional number known as the flow number which actually accounts for the difference in the flow conditions within your tank. This dimensional number can easily be calculated from knowing the exit volumetric flow rate at the blade surface, alongside with knowing the rotational speed and the diameter of the blade. So for the purpose of transporting our product, another dimensionless number is of interest, and that is known as the power number. This actually can be easily calculated once we compute the flow regime, which we know from fluid mechanics is by calculating the Reynolds number. And this form is quite different from what is really taught in fluid mechanics, where you now have to consider the consistency index and the flow behavior index as well inside your Reynolds number equation. So um, if we solve for the p-value, we then have an idea for the minimum power that's actually required by our inline mixer or a pump to transport and share our product. And fortunately for us, they do exist graphical curves similar to the Moody chart that will assist in calculating a power number. And an example of this curve, which we call as an agitator curve is seen here, where for different turbines or different impeller geometries, there is a relationship between the flow number and the Reynolds number with respect to each other. Now it's time to do a worksheet. Uh, in our OSCE CT, we have definitely submitted a PDF where persons can get access to the relevant equations that we'll be discussing. And we're going to definitely leave time for students to um, spend some time on the problems and we go through the, each problem sets together. So problem one states, a uh, hand lotion of relative density 0 0.97 is mixed in a tank with agitator blade diameter of 870 millimeters at a speed of 500 RPM. The exit volumetric flow rate at the blade region was estimated to be 2.5 meters cubed per second. And we want you to assume that the blade is an actual propeller with four baffles. Uh, so there's two parts of this problem. Um, first, we want you to calculate the non-dimensional constant Ks. And then following this, we want you to calculate the average shear rate applied by the tank. So please take a second to use the equations um, provided and try the problem on your own. So we hope you guys got a chance to try to tackle the problem. Um, this problem wasn't, wasn't too bad. Um, so the first step was to calculate the non-dimensional constant Ks. Um, so the first step should be to convert the impeller speed from RPM um, to units per second. Uh, so this can be done easily by just converting the time units. Um, next, um, the next step should be to determine the flow number. And by this, we just use the provided equation and it's pretty much plug and chug from there. And you should have got a value of around 0 0.456. And then the last step should be to use the correlations to find KS and uh, from the worksheet, we see that for actual propellers, the KS is equal to seven times the power, the flow number. Uh, so this should have given you a final answer of around 3.192. So now we work on problem number two. So here we have a case where we have a bench scale experiment, which is conducted on a sample of hand lotion to characterize our fluid as whether it be in a shear thinning and shear thickening fluid. And of course, using the below collected data, of a shear stress or a shear rate, otherwise known as your rheological data set, we ask a few questions of you to answer. So the first question, of course, is to determine whether or not the fluid is, is shear thinning or shear thickening. And of course, briefly explain your answer to why such is so. Then we ask of you to calculate what the apparent viscosity is at a specific shear rate. Then we want you to determine the flow behavior index and the consistency index based off the data set provided above as well. 
Then we want to determine the flow regime of our specific system once it's mixed within our tank based on problem one description. And of course, be able to determine the minimum power required by a pump or inline mixer, for instance, to transport our product. So once again, pause this video, um, take some time, um, work with your friends, work by yourself, and we'll go through this problem on the preceding slides. Well, I hope you all were able to solve this problem in a reasonable amount of time. Now we'll go through each part together. So for part A, if you can recall, we want to determine whether or not the fluid is shear thinning or shear thickening. So once you're able to plot this graph on the Excel or MATLAB, if so be it, you will see that the fluid is actually shear thinning. And the reason is because the rheology profile or the flow curve in this case, indicates that an increase in your shear rate corresponds to an increase in your shear stress. Now on to part B. Part B really just wanted us to calculate what is the specific apparent viscosity at a particular shear rate. And here in the table, we can see that at 96.6 .6 per second, um, that corresponds to a shear stress of 3.09 Pascals. So if we were to use an equation that correlates the viscosity to these two different variables, we will get that the viscosity at that particular shear rate corresponds to a value of around 0.032 Pascal seconds. On to the next part. So this part I, I must say was a little bit more challenging as it required um, deriving a few equations to make your life much easier, but hopefully you did receive the answers as seen below. So how do we approach this problem? So using below equations or equations that are seen on the worksheet, you can actually obtain a linear uh, expression to easily calculate your indices of interest. So in this case, we use two equations, one that is used to describe the viscosity, and one that is used to describe the shear stress to a power law fluid. So K raised to the N for the shear rate. Once you're able to substitute the equation two into one, you get a particular expression. And once you take the log of both sides in order to make it linear, you would get that the logarithmic of the viscosity is equal to log k plus the n minus one multiplied by the log of the shear rate. So once you're able to plot these graph, the data on these graph, you see in the graph on the right, you see a linear expression where your slope, which represents n minus one, is equal to negative 0.5193. Of course, once you do simple algebra, you will get that your, your index n is a roughly 0 0.481. And the cool thing about this is that this actually verifies that we indeed do have a shear thinning fluid. And the reason is because your index is less than one. So that's a really good check to ensure that your data set makes sense. And on the preceding side, to calculate your consistency index k, okay, the exponential of your y-intercept will give you a value of around 0 0.63, and that correlates to your consistency index k. Now on to problem part D for problem number two. So we were more interested in being able to calculate your flow regime. And in this case, we were able to realize that you're, you have a turbulent flow pattern in your tank. So once you're able to plug in all the necessary variables, so you plug in your density, you plug in your K, your N values, your KS values that you solved in problem number one, you get a Reynolds number of around 53,000. Um, so once you're able to pinpoint that value approximately on your agitator curve seen on the right, you should then get that your power number NP is estimated to be around 1.5 roughly. So once you have now that power number, you can simply plug that into your power equation. Um, so for your P, that would be 1.5 times 970 um, times 8.33 times 870 raised to the fifth power. And that will give you a power of around 419 kilowatts. So hopefully these problems weren't too difficult and hopefully you all learned something new in this lesson.
And hopefully you also see the applications are, of non-Newtonian fluids and versus Newtonian fluids in your preceding career. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day. If you do have any questions in regards to this, you can definitely email one of the group members and we're, we're glad to talk to you guys more about non-Newtonian fluids. Have a great day.